Welcome to Lakeside Worship Center. Thank you for letting us be a part of your spiritual journey this morning. This is Christmas season. And again, we need you to be obedient. We need you to stay home, wear your mask, sanitize your hands. I know it's hard. It is hard for me to. Uh, I, I want to be with my brothers and sisters and, and my mom. And, and I want to be with my grandchildren and my kids. And, and I can't. Because we need to be obedient where we can get rid of this coronavirus thing, where we can get back to regular life of living. But if we be obedient and everybody practice safety together, we can get there. Hey, I'm ready to worship this morning. Are you? Let's go. Let's go worship. Thank you. 
beautiful. Amen. 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 He's able to do whatever you're going through. Give it to God because He's able to do whatever you need. He keeps His promises. focus on you and not me. Your word is perfect. And we pray, dear God, that someone can take this message and use it during this Christmas season 
that they show nothing but love for one another. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We put a tag on the message, red, the color of Christmas. Red. This time of the year we see a lot of red. We see red lights on Christmas trees, wrapping paper, um, bowls, and candy canes, and red hearts, envelopes with cards wishing you a Merry Christmas. But sometime during the Christmas season, our relationship causes us to see a different kind of red. It might be an angry red or a red hot hate red because we feel like we're forced to be around some people that we rather not be around. Somebody say amen. This might not sound very Christian this morning or what you expect to hear your pastor say a few weeks before Christmas. But I, but I got to tell you something. Over the next couple weeks, some of us will be spending some time with a couple people that we just don't want to be around. And maybe COVID is helping us out because if we stay home like we're supposed to, then you don't have to be around them. But if you do, you know what type of person they are. They don't want to wear their mask. They don't believe that COVID's real. Or they want to talk politics when they're around you. They have no clue on what they're talking about. And not only do you have to spend time with them, you have to buy them a gift. And, and you know, you know, know the one. They have one certain family member or friend that, that, that brings up that same bad memory of something that happened to you 40 years ago and you long wish to forget it. And they won't let it go. And all they want to do is talk about themselves, of who they are and who they be around and what they've done and what they're doing. You know the one. We all have one. And maybe it's someone that has, 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 has wronged you or, or hurt you in the past or, or hurt someone that you really care about. Maybe it's someone who's just obnoxious and, and, or really rubs you the wrong way. And, and, and right now in the privacy of your own mind and your heart, who do you wish you could just remove from your Christmas? Who is it? If you could just have someone not be a part of your Christmas or your life, who would it be? Who's that one particular person? Would it be your boss? Would it be that good backstabbing co-worker of yours that always taking your ideals and taking credit for it? Or how about that awful ex-husband or ex-wife that you still have to make sure your kids buy a gift for? Who is it? Or maybe it's someone who makes you see red and feel a red hot hate type of feeling. Maybe it's someone who, from whom you don't really feel much of anything at all for, instead of hate, you, you feel empathy. We all have that one person in our life from whom the truth be told. We could not care less about, and, and I'm no different than you. I, I, I have that one particular person in my life that I, I, I don't have any bad feelings toward the person. I don't really want to spend any time with him, not because I have a red hate love for them because they really don't offer me anything. Yeah, this is the pastor speaking. He isn't all that interesting to me and, and, and he isn't fun, fun to be around. Do you have anybody in your life like that? People you have read for but not because of hate but because of empathy. Red. Red. We find red everywhere this time of the year. Red candy canes, sweaters are red, Rudolph's nose is red, sleigh is red, red doors, red socks, trees are red, little red Corvettes, red hats, red lights, Christmas ornaments are red, red hearts, red boots, red socks, red gloves, everything is red. I even see somebody with some red glasses on the other day. Red. Christmas and red go together, and red is also the color of love. And as this Christmas season, God wants us to see red 
and learn how to love one another. Someone say amen. One of the best Christmas verses there is makes no mention of, of Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, and, or even the angels. But this one verse reveals God's motivation in incarnating himself into human life and human existing. And in one verse, it tells the whole Christmas story. And it said, for God loved the world. This one single verse tells more about God and his plan for this world than any other verse in the Bible. God gave his most extravagant thing he could to demonstrate his love for lost humankind, his son, to pay the debt for our sin. His son to pay the debt for our sin. There are over 7 billion, 500 million people that call planet Earth home. And according to this verse, God loves every single one of them. Regardless of the color of your skin, regardless of the color of your hair, regardless of how tall you are, how short you are, how fat you are, how skinny you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how dirty you are, it says God loves you. It says for God loved, so loved the world. That's each and every single one of us. And, and, and here's the question I have for you this morning. Here's the question. Do you really believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that, that 7 billion, 500 million people in the world, that God loves every single one of them? And some of them don't even believe it. But he loves them. Do you believe it? Here it is. That person, red as in love, he loves you. That person, that person in red hot hate, he loves you. That person that stabbed you in the back, he loves you. That person that always talking about you, he loves them. His only response is red heart full of love full of joy. If God loves like that, then he gives me seven billion reasons to think about the people in my life who I either, I just can't stand or I don't care about. Somebody needs to say amen this morning. And the verse goes on. The verse goes on. That he gave his only begotten son. I I have heard people say that the wise men was the first gift givers that showed up at Christmas and their gifts started the whole thing about giving and the truth to be told, they wasn't even there. Scripture indicates that they were, they came along much later. But even if they were there, the gift giving wasn't started by the wise men, but by God himself. It was the gift of God's son carried in the body of Mary, wrapped in swaddling cloths, God started the Christmas giving with the ultimate gift, his son. Don't miss your shot this morning. Don't miss your shot this morning. I've been given a lot of gifts over the period of my 60 years of being on this earth at Christmas time, and some of them broke the same day. But one gift that my parents gave to me many, 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 many years ago was the gift of Christ introducing me to Jesus, and it still worked. It still worked. It still works. The question I have for you this morning is, who would you give your life for? Now let's back that up. Who would you give your son for or your daughter for? Would you give him for me? I'm pastor. Would you give him for me? I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. That is what God did that first Christmas morning. He knew that giving his son up to be wrapped in weakness and in skin and walk as a human would be the greatest gift in this world. He knew the road to Bethlehem was going to lead to the cross. God sent his son Jesus to love and teach us on how to love. His love for the whole world led to the greatest gift. Somebody say something this morning. Somebody shout hallelujah this morning. Then the verse concludes here. It says, that whoever, whosoever believes in him 
would not perish but have everlasting life. Think about that thought for a minute. Whosoever. Whosoever means anybody. Whosoever means I don't care where you come from, where you been, how dirty you are, how rich you are, how poor you are. Everyone. It's everyone. It's everyone. He says, he says, whosoever. That's anyone. Whosoever. Listen what this is what Peter said in 2 Peter in the third chapter 9 verse. He said, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Everyone come to repentance. That is the red love, red love, red love to have everyone come to repentance, to turn from their wicked ways and find their way to Jesus. Don't miss your shot this morning. God wants Christmas to be the time of the year that we enjoy the people we love and love the people that we enjoy. It goes back. It goes back to John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. The gift may be already bought for that person that you have those bad feelings for. But it's time to have a heart transport, transplant toward that person right now. It's time to have a heart transplant toward that person right now. And what if the one thing that God wants us to do right now, this Christmas, is to change our heart toward that one person. Change our heart toward that one person. What if in changing your heart, he helps you to see how much he loves even you. Even you. If we could only see people the way God does, we could be, you know, it would just blow your mind. We would not be in the situation we in in our nation today right now with division and hate and hatred and fighting and violence and killing each other we wouldn't be here if we had love for one another if we could see each other the way God sees us we wouldn't be killing each other we wouldn't have hatred toward each other because God values each and every person more than we would ever even know. The cradle and the cross proved it. Yes. The cradle and the cross proved it. God loves, can truly bring peace and goodwill toward me in the day. We need it. Our world is messed up. And it seems like the only time that we can come together and love on each other is during a crisis. Something terrible has to happen before we even speak to our neighbors. Something terrible has to happen before brothers and sisters mend their relationships with each other. Something terrible has to happen before we see love as a nation, as one. And then it only lasts for a little while, and then it's all over with. We back to our same old wicked ways. But this morning, in the comfort of your home, maybe you're watching with someone that invited you to watch this morning, or maybe you accidentally flipped on this channel this morning. And maybe you don't know who I'm talking about. But I'm talking about a man named Jesus. I'm talking about a man that can take all that red hate out of your life. 
and his credits are way too long to list. He has done the impossible time after time. He has he hails out of the manger in Bethlehem to the, of, in Jerusalem by the way of heaven. His mother is still headlining in the Catholic Church today. His daddy is still the author of the book that's still the bestseller on the best-selling list of all time. He holds a record for the greatest fish fry. He fed 5,000 with two catfish and five loaves of bread. And let me tell you something else. He can walk on water, and he has walked on water. He can turn water into wine, and he has a headshot on every church fan all across the country. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. He's a bright morning star, Lords of Lord, Kings of King, Prince of Peace. He has made the blind man see and a lame walk. Oh, somebody needs to shout this morning. But I have one question for you this morning. Is he worthy of your praise? Is he worthy of your praise? Because I'm telling you something this morning. When you wake up on Christmas morning, there's going to be a gift with your name on it. But I'm going to tell you something. The gift has already been given to you and it has your name on it. Because Jesus has put his stamp on your heart. And Jesus is saying that I can make a way out of no way. I can take that red hate love away from you and give you joy, give you peace, give you forgiveness. I can change your heart. I can transplant your heart. But what I'm asking you this morning, do you believe it? Do you believe that he can change you? And that you can have the love for that person that you have that red hate for, the same love that Jesus has for you. Yes, he can do it. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. God bless you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank you for letting me be part of your spiritual journey this morning. And remember this here. God can transplant your heart and take that hate away and put love the way that you can love the way that he loves. God bless you. we see you next week. Remember this here. When praises go up, 
Blessings come down. God bless you.